New on Daybreak in a story that is important to anyone who sits behind the wheel of a car. How safe are your tires, especially in wet conditions? ABC Gio Benita shows us why now is the time to make sure your tires keep you safe on the roads. Happening today, folks in Amarillo marching for marijuana. It's part of the Global Marijuana March. Now, the global event started back in 1999. Since then, hundreds of thousands of people from nearly 900 different cities and 72 countries have participated in the march. Well, next tonight in national news, two people were found brutally killed in a Boston penthouse. A suspect is in custody as authorities continue searching for answers. ABC's Ariel Resha reports. ABC 7's Morgan Burrell is in our newsroom taking a look at the events leading up to this point, but we will start with ABC 7's Nicole Kahn, who is live in Hip Hill County with the latest details. Nicole? David, not the news the community of Canadian was hoping to hear. Thomas Brown's remains found here along Lake Marvin Road. The family asking for privacy at this time. They have not released anything to the media at this point. Many in the community calling for prayers for them as they deal with their grief. We'll continue to update you as more information becomes available. Now we're going to head over to Morgan Burrell in the newsroom who has more information on the timeline of Thomas Brown's disappearance. Thomas Brown was last seen just hours before Thanksgiving Day in 2016. And since then, the story of his disappearance has captured the attention of people in and around the Texas Panhandle. Just hours after Thomas disappeared, a friend of his used a helicopter to look for his car. That's when the family hosted a turkey trot to honor him. And again, the Brown and the Meek family has, have asked for privacy as they deal with the news of Thomas's death. Reporting in the newsroom, Morgan Burrell, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Morgan. And we'll have all stories about the developments in the search for Thomas Brown over the last two years on our website, abc7amarillo.com. And along those lines, tomorrow is the first day to file an application for a place on the May 4th ballot for City Council. That filing period will end February 15th. The drawing for the position on the ballot will happen at City Hall on February 21st. If you want to vote in this year's election, the last day to register is April 4th. Early voting will start April 22nd and ends April 30th. Happening now, Hutchinson County VFW Post 671 in Borger is working on plans to help veterans in the Texas Panhandle who are struggling with post-military life. In Texas news, the 86th legislative session kicked off this week with lawmakers discussing solutions to Texans' problems. We're taking a look at the agenda this year and what the big talking points are. We're discussing them with Governor Greg Abbott, who is live in Austin with us. Thanks for joining us, Governor. First, what are your priorities for this year's session? Number one is school finance reform, improving our schools, paying our teachers more, improving education for our students. Uh, number two is property tax reform. Listen, whether you're in Amarillo or other parts of the state of Texas, Property taxes are too high, and we must reform the way uh, that property is taxed in the state of Texas. If I could add also, we want to make sure that uh, we make our schools safer places for our students. We obviously have to uh, address the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey uh, and address the ongoing needs of the people of the state of Texas and make sure that our economy remains the number one job creator in the nation. I think we all want to see that. What do you believe will be the biggest obstacles, though, to making sure all of that gets done this year? Well, obviously, uh, projects like property tax reform and education reform, paying our teachers more as well as addressing uh, the teacher retirement system is going to cost a lot of money. I believe that there are, are strategies that can be used to pay for all of these projects. It's just a matter of getting agreement by all the legislators uh, on what those paths are. And as far as school safety and improvements, a big topic, what would you say is the top priority as far as finding funding? Where do you think that will come from? Well, the, the funding for school safety will exist, and it'll, it'll come from a couple of different strategies. First, uh, re remember that in the aftermath of the Santa Fe shooting, I had three days of roundtables and put out a 40-point plan. Some of those points have already been implemented. Some will require additional funding. In part, it'll depend upon uh, what strategies each particular school wants to adopt. But there's another plan, however, that Amarillo and, and uh, Lubbock have already played a big role in, uh, and it's called 
uh, a telemedicine wellness program that's been used in schools uh, in the Amarillo and Lubbock regions to great effect, and it addresses our biggest challenge, and that is mental health of our students in schools. And if we address that, it will do a lot to reduce potential violence. And I believe there is an appetite by legislators to make sure we pay for that program and take it statewide. Thank you so much for your time, Governor Abbott. Come see us in Amarillo sometime. We'd love to have you. I'll do it. Thank you so much, Nicole. For folks who aren't in shape right now and they really feel like it's a good time to get in shape, mm -hmm. what would you suggest a way for them to start when they're over 50? Well, if you've not ever worked out before, you want to start slowly mm -hmm. and you want to seek the help of a professional, say a trainer at Gold's Gym, yeah. but you want to start slowly. You know one? Raise your hand. I huh? do. I know one. Okay. <laughs> I know more than one, but you want to start slowly. You don't want to just jump in there, you know, because most, a lot of people were athletes in high school and they think I ran a quarter this fast in high school. I'm going to go get on the treadmill and I'm going to sprint. That's not the thing to do when you're 50. You need to take it a little bit slower. You need to have a warm up. Gotcha. So that's what, what your goal is. Um, start Give me a good warm-up. Give me an example up? of a good warm-up that we can show folks at home. First tonight at 6, these hot temperatures are expected to last into the weekend, which may make your weekend plans, especially if they include a trip to Wonderland Park. Pretty toasty. That's where Storm Search 7 forecaster Ryan Coulter is to tell us more about what we can expect over the next couple of days. Ryan? A little bit, it is a little bit toasty out here, David, and uh, that means that we don't have any clouds overhead, so that's the good news. Uh, storm chances for Amarillo are not expected tonight, very low, and in fact, we are seeing a few thunderstorms, but they are way off to our northwest. We'll take a look at those here in just a little bit, but I want to go to our sky cam right up on top, the Texas tornado right above us here. We're seeing a lot of people already showing up, and of course, Wonderland Park is open until 10 o'clock tonight. If you are heading out, make sure you bring that sunscreen and the water with you, because again, those storms are going to stay well, well to our north and west tonight, and we're going to be dealing with the sunny, warm conditions here for a little bit longer. Right now in downtown Amarillo, we're still sitting at 94 degrees under sunny skies. We have a little bit of a breeze, which is helping with the heat just a little bit, but still, it is warm out here. Those gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Going through the evening hours tonight at midnight, we're dropping back into the 70s, and by 7 a.m. tomorrow, we're back up down our low rather is going to be at 66 degrees. So we will have a full look at your forecast here in just a little bit. We'll look at how long this warm weather sticks around and when our next rain chances might be coming back to town. We'll talk about that in your full forecast, David. In crime news tonight, many Amarillo bars served minors who were helping APD during a compliance check last night. The minors assisting in this investigation did not actually consume any alcohol. Police say criminal charges are pending for bartenders who sold alcohol to minors. They face a fine of up to $4,000, up to a year in jail or both. These cases will be sent to the DA's office and the TABC for further action. News from New Mexico, the state Supreme Court has set aside the death penalty for the final two inmates who had been waiting execution since the state's repeal of capital punishment back in 2009, the court concluded that the sentences for Timothy Allen and Robert Fry were disproportionate in comparison with similar cases. They have sent these cases back to district court to impose life in prison for the two men. Get ready for another traffic detour on Amarillo's east side. TxDOT says Lakeside Drive will be shut down at Interstate 40 this weekend for demolition of the I-40 westbound bridge. That includes the turnarounds at Lakeside. This closure begins at 7 tonight. It ends at 6 Monday morning. Detour signs will be in place, but local drivers are encouraged to find other routes. Happening right now, the Rockin' Route 66 Festival is underway, celebrating the historic highway through Tucumcari. The festival was started to celebrate the history of the Mother Road and the vibrant days of that old-time rock and roll. ABC7's Leah Kamana is live in Tucumcari to tell us more about this festival. Leah? Yes, I'm here in the Tucumcari Route 66 Museum, which is in the Tucumcari Convention Center, which is also where the Rock and Route 66 Festival is happening all weekend. I'm joined by Dave Shine, the president of the museum, and Reverend Andy Hawley, who is one of the organizers of the event. And, you know, why is it so great to have events like this celebrating Route 66? Well, the museum gives folks a glimpse into the past when the heyday of Route 66 was when travelers were going from Chicago to California. 
and we are uh, really fortunate to partner with the Rock and Route 66 Festival to draw some more exposure to our town, to Comcary, to our museum, and uh, it is a great opportunity. And uh, the Reverend here is doing a great job on helping us gain exposure for our town and our museum. One of the beautiful things about events like this is that uh, the people that live, thrive, and survive in uh, that 1950s, 1940s culture, they love things like this. They love things like Tucumcari, they love things like the Rock and Route 66, and they love things like the Route 66 Museum. So it all encompasses whether it's you come for the music or the, uh, uh, the clothing style or you come for the cars. Uh, it all goes under that subculture, a custom culture lifestyle. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dave and Reverend Andy, for joining me. Guys, the festival is happening all weekend. You, events start tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can come check out the museum, come check out music, yep. everything else the festival has to offer. But thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And reporting live from Tucumcari Route 66 Museum, Leah Kamenaw, ABC7 News. Coming up on ABC7 Nightside, there's a new mayor in town. Find out who won in the Amarillo race. Also new on Nightside, Canyon now has new city council members. We speak with them and find out their goals. After a warm and breezy afternoon, things are really feeling good out there on this Saturday night. In fact, we're still near 70 degrees here in downtown Amarillo. What we've got in store for the second half of the weekend and when we start to see a shift in our weather pattern. That and more in the full forecast here at 10. Your voice, your vote. This is a special election edition of ABC7 News, powered by Amarillo National Bank. Well, good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. And first tonight, it is Election Day across the Panhandle. The race everyone has their eye on here in Amarillo is that race for mayor. Back in January, current mayor Paul Harpole announced he would not be running, opening up the field for three new candidates. And the winner is Ginger Nelson by a landslide. And take a look at these numbers. Nelson getting 79% of the votes. Jim Louder coming in next with 16% and Renee Dantes getting 5%. ABC 7's Tatiana Tumor is standing by live from Nelson's watch party and tells us what we can expect from Amarillo's newest leader. Tatiana? That's right, Lisa and Larry. I'm here with Amarillo's new mayor, Ginger Nelson. Come in here. Congratulations, Mayor Nelson. I mean, how does that sound to you? <laughs> Surprising, but just so exciting. Yeah. Can you even put into words, I mean, what's going through your mind right now? How are you feeling? I'm exhilarated, and I'm so excited that Amarillo voters have chosen to give me a chance to affect change here in Amarillo. I just really think we need a culture change here, and I'm excited about getting an opportunity to do that. And I mean, you're just a small town girl, right? Taking on this big city now? Isn't that crazy? I mean, I grew up in Spearman, and so hello to all my Spearman friends that I know are watching, but it's just amazing to think that my shining city on the hill, Amarillo, is now going to be um, something as a new opportunity for me, uh, and I'm really, really excited about that. Now, what I really want to know, what is the first thing you're going to do when you take office? The first thing I'm going to do is put into action all the things that the voters have been telling me as I've been going around the city and doing over 300 meetings to learn about what the issues are. And the most important issue is bringing a change in our culture. We need a change where we can think about problems of, with solutions instead of being afraid of tackling them. So I'm looking forward to having a, um, a culture of can do and a culture of will do here in Amarillo. Amazing. Now, Mayor Nelson and the other city council members will take office on May 16th. Reporting live from Southwest Amarillo, Tatiana Tumor, ABC 7 News. Tatiana, thank you so much. Well, another big race here in Amarillo is for city council. Eight candidates battling out for a seat. The results are in and there will be all new faces sitting in City Hall at the weekly council meetings. ABC 7's Colby Smallzell joins us in the studio now with more on the winners. Colby? 
Lisa, Larry, that's right. We officially have four new city council members. For place one, Elaine Hayes beat out incumbent Elijah Demerson. Hayes says she wants to prioritize major budget items, especially in regards to the bonds passed in November. In place two, Frida Powell winning out over James Skank. Powell says she wants to focus on public safety and infrastructure when she takes the seat. Eddie Sauer beat out Thomas Warren II for council seat three. Sauer says he wants to promote community growth as a council member. And for place four, Howard Smith beat out incumbent, uh, incumbent council member Mark Nair. Smith says he wants to put an end to divisiveness and restore trust in city government. The new council will be sworn in on May 16th, as Tatiana says. Reporting from the Kennedy Broadcast Center, Colby Smallzell, ABC 7 News. Colby, thank you. Well, continuing in your voice, your vote. Voters decided on school bonds for improvements to districts across the area today. Yeah, out in Herford, voters said no to a $45 million bond, which would have improved Herford Independent School District's facilities and enhance safety and security at all 10 of its campuses. 59% of voters were against and 41% were for the bond. Voters also turned down a $43 million bond in 2015. And in Borger, a nearly $41 million bond for the school district has been passed by voters. This money will go toward upgrades in schools across the district as well as Bulldog Stadium. Now over in Childress tonight, voters decided not to pass a $19.8 million bond for Childress ISD. That money would have gone to upgrade schools in the district. 73% of voters were against it while only 27% were for that bond. Well, now we're taking a look at the Canyon City Commission results. Two incumbents were voted out. The mayor and two other commissioners ran unopposed. Gary Henders ran unopposed for mayor. The city commissioner placed two winner is Cody Jones with 66%. The place three winner is Paul Lyons with 59%. Place four winner Roger Remlinger ran unopposed. And place five incumbent Justin Richardson will retain his seat. ABC 7's Kendra Hall joins us in studio with more. Kendra? Yeah, Lisa and Larry, that's right. Two incumbents voted, voted out. One very close race. Paul Lyons beat longtime incumbent David Logan. David Logan was placed three city commissioner in Canyon for 13 years. Today, he was beat by Paul Lyons in a very close race. Lyons says he's excited to serve the city that he's called home since the 70s. Place two is also a tight race between Cody Jones and incumbent Joe Shane. Shane, Shane served one term and said in his last two years, he worked to grow the city of Canyon. Jones says he's excited to serve the community in a unique way. I just want to thank my, my supporters that voted for me. I appreciate it more than they'll ever know. And, uh, and I can tell them that uh, every decision I make will be in the best interest of the Canyon. I can't uh, take credit for myself. I really can't. Um, Canyon High School, Canyon ISD have both put me in a position, and along with Canyon Police Department, to, uh, to be able to serve this community in a really unique way. And so I've been blessed. And they'll all be sworn in on May 15th. Reporting live from the Kennedy Broadcast Center, Kendra Hall, ABC 7 News. Kendra, thank you. And we are your Election Day headquarters. There are more elections happening across the panhandle. We are constantly updating the results as they come in. To stay up to date, go to our website, abc7amarillo.com. Well, now we're getting a check of your forecast. Storm Search 7 meteorologist Alyssa Pollock joining us this evening. Yeah, feeling very summer-like out there this afternoon. Our temperatures took off for the 80s and 90s, but the nice thing about these hot afternoons is that we've got really pleasant evenings. It was a little breezy out there. Now that the sun has set, things feeling really good. I want to give you a live look outside from Carver Elementary Academy. We've just dropped back to 69 degrees here in downtown Amarillo with a southeast wind around 10 miles per hour. We stay quiet tonight, increase our clouds for tomorrow, and then we're talking rain chances for next week. Lots to get to in the full forecast. That'll be coming up in a few minutes. Alyssa, thank you. Well, right now, a truck driver is recovering from minor injuries after the semi he was driving crashed. The Texas Department of Public Safety says the driver of this semi has those minor injuries after its truck tipped over while turning into the Tyson plant northeast of Amarillo today. DPS says the truck was carrying cattle, killing four of the cows. And now to an update on a story we first brought you last night. We now know the names of the family involved in that fatal crash in Carson County. DPS tells us Donna Brewer of Edmond, Oklahoma, was driving an SUV west on I-40, and when she drove off the road and lost control, the vehicle rolled, ejecting five of the seven people inside. Brewer and the front seat passenger, McKinney Pointer of Oklahoma City, were pronounced dead on the scene. Pointer and four of the juveniles were not wearing a seatbelt. Well, when we come back here on ABC 7 Nightside. Hundreds of athletes are at Boys Ranch competing for some special titles. More on that right after the break. <laughs> 